There's energy in the Rainier Valley, that's for sure, and someone who has a lot of energy herself is our guest tonight, Amber Campbell, editor-publisher of the Rainier Valley Post right here on Community Blog TV. Amber, welcome back. Thank you, Stan. As uh, we, all of us on the crew, we were all talking about how excited that we are for, for you to be here because you always have some great stories <laughs> from, from the Rainier Valley. So It's such a great community. I mean, you know, I just, I just tell you all the great things that are going on there, but um, there are a lot of people working very hard to see that that's a vibrant, safe, prosperous community. And uh, let's just remind our viewers that uh, RainierValleyPost.com is what it is. So go to that website, and that is the blog itself, and there is so much news. Wow, and then you can participate too. And actually, a lot of the participation from the readers on the, of the RainierValleyPost.com is making it right here on, on the show tonight. Uh, but let's go first, though, to the, uh, the Rainier Valley Chamber. Or the Rainier Chamber of Commerce has has some awards out. Let's, mm -hmm. let's help celebrate some of those people. We're mm -hmm. going to go to the first one, and the first one is to uh, Julie Pham, mm -hmm. the John Merrill Memorial Service Award to recognize her contr contributions to the Rainier District. First off, tell us about these awards since you're you kind of know the chamber really well. Mm -hmm. Well, this is the chamber's way of celebrating um, sort of the un unsung heroes in our community every year, and it's a big deal. It's a time to honor not only, um, you know, uh, uh, adult leaders in the community, but also student leaders. You see that there are some scholarships given out and um, recognizing some of the people that are working really hard, as I said earlier, to make this such a great place to live. Uh, Julie Pham? Julie Pham is a, um, I know Julie well, actually. She's the editor of uh, one of our local Vietnamese uh, newspapers, and it's a family-run business, and they all work very hard. In fact, those are her brother's photos, Don Pham there, oh, okay. um, and, and they're just a great family, and they work so hard um, for the Vietnamese community specifically and the Rainier Valley community um, in general. And she there's really a deserves very strong award. Vietnamese uh, community there certainly inside is. the Rainier Valley. Uh, Brian Fairchild is the winner of the John L. O'Brien Lifetime Achievement Award for Outstanding Vision, Leadership, and Achievement. He is just one of those really special people that um, he's just, you know, he's very warm and friendly and um, always makes you feel um, like you're the only one in the room. He's a really good guy and really deserves that award. And then Sam Osborne accepted the Community Service Award for the Rainier Valley Food Bank for Excellence in Service uh, and support to the uh, Rainier Valley itself. So the Rainier Valley Food Bank, pretty important stuff. Huh? Oh, they work so hard. They work so hard. And Sam's always the first one to say that, you know, he's just the figurehead to accept the award, but he has a great team that works very hard down there. And we got to give props to Dr. Paul Hasegawa. He's the Business of the Year Award for the Hasegawa Family and, and Aesthetic Dentistry for Excellence in Business and Community Practices. That's another great family-owned business in the Rainier Valley. And it just, you know, it's so nice to see businesses that have been around, local businesses run by local people um, that have been around for so long thriving. And Dr. Hasegawa's practice is thriving as evidenced by the brand new beautiful neon sign that can be seen right on uh, Rainier Avenue South in Columbia City. And let's go to the next graphic because what it is is uh, the uh, Mayor McGinn was at that Rainier Chamber meeting. He correct? was. He helped present the scholarship awards as a matter of fact. And he gave the the State of the Valley address from uh, Mayor McGinn and uh, you can go on to RainierValleyPost.com and go to the article about this, the Chamber of Commerce uh, awards, and you can go and click, and you can watch that address. And instead, actually, Amber, of you telling us what the mayor said, how about you telling us what the state of the valley is? Oh, well, gosh. Um, you know, as I said earlier, uh, there are a lot of people working very hard to make the Rainier Valley a, a great place to live and work. Um, we certainly have our struggles. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think is the biggest struggle? Uh, the lack of jobs. Um, I, I, I think that um, there are a lot of people that would say um, that if there were more economic vitality in the Rainier Valley, um, that the people would be doing a lot better. And, um, and I think that's true. I think that's true. And if certainly we, you know, that's not just a problem in the Rainier Valley. Oh, I mean, yeah. it's a problem everywhere, um, especially in Washington State. But, uh, but I think the Rainier Valley in particular is really struggling. Um, okay. There was a curious op-ed. And I say curious because it's great to see uh, an elected member of the legislature, uh, Senator Adam, say Senator Adam Klein, who was willing essentially to put himself out there to 
to accept the criticism of, mm -hmm. of readers and, and props from the readers as well. It's brave. Uh, so Senator Adam Klein on the This Killing Budget, Driving Wild Poor, and Foreclosure Prevention and More. There was, there was so much in it, we can't go through the whole thing, but there was one very, very curious comment. He says this, the cops could never, this again, Senator Adam Klein saying this, the cops could never really admit it publicly, but they really, really like to be able to search your car, which they can do when they arrest you for a crime, but not an infraction. What is this all about? You know, Stan, it's such a curious time right now with uh, our re uh, the public's relationship um, with law enforcement. There seems to be, on one hand, I, I, I know, there, I have sources within the police department that say that, um, you know, morale is low, that, that, that Seattle police officers are feeling like, you know, they can't proactively do their job um, without being criticized um, by local politicians. I think this, some would say that this is a perfect example um, of that sort of backlash that they're feeling, uh, considering, you know, uh, the threats and the and the attacks against um, some of our law enforcement officers in the last few years. Mm -hmm. um, it, that's why I started out by saying it's, it, it's curious. It, it, it's it's uh, hard to draw a line uh, between some of that. And so um, I think that was a, as I said, that was a perfect example. Uh, it is brave for Senator Klein to put himself out there like that. Mm -hmm. Some would say that our uh, commenters can be harsh. Um, Mm -hmm. I, I don't think so. I, I think they're I think they're honest. I think they're um, I think they're frank. Uh, I think they call it like they see it. And in this well, case, they were they were certainly on their toes. Well, actually, let, let's go to some of them right here. Um, the first one is uh, I think it's uh, CBO driving. Oh no, this see this is uh, oh yeah. A lot of the commenters were talking about the charges themselves. And so here is South Seattle cop. He says these charges are filed routinely, and that's the problem. Apparently, the good senator is not paying attention to Peter Holmes' policy on filing for more, uh, for more accurately, not filing uh, DWLS and, and R charges. I don't even know what that is. Uh, but he's reducing the DWLS 3 filings by 90%. It might have been 80%, but I'm pretty sure he, he said 90%. What was the general consensus from the commenters with regard to what the South Seattle cop is talking about? And is he really a South Seattle cop, do you know? Don't have to answer that one. He is. No. Oh. Um, yes, I, I can confirm. Okay. Um, and um, and he certainly knows his numbers, as you can see. Um, and I think a lot of the you know sort of more um, you know layman opinions, if you will, from other commenters really sort of echoed that. That in fact they they found it uh, the senator's comments to be a little bit inflammatory um, at best and uh, wrong. Well, let's at, go to at let's, worst. Let's go to some, let's go to some <laughs> more quotes. Let's go to some more quotes. Um, here's another one from CBO: Driving while poor. How about not racking up traffic tickets if you can't pay them? And then Tiffany says uh, <laughs> says uh, as to that particular quote, saying, "Revolutionary idea. I'm with you. In the last nine plus years, I've had no tickets for moving violations, and only two parking tickets. Uh, I would uh, so follow the rules, and you don't get tickets. Not everything is a personal attack." That's great. I love how she. I love how she wrapped yeah, she that up. She really kind of put that that right. Let's actually continue on with some quotes, though, because this was really pretty interesting. Let's go. Let's go to the next one now. Marcus, don't know this person at all, um, and he kind of has a column all in and of himself. It's a really long, long uh, comment. Let's go to the first pull from it. He says this. He says, the concept of driving while poor is completely made up too, likely by PERMA activists who uh, always seem to have a lot of time on their hands for the dumbest of dumb causes. Uh, that's, yeah, pretty pointed. Uh, all right, well, we'll just go on. We won't ask you. <laughs> and then he says, number one, there's no constitutional right to drive. He's absolutely right about that. And number two, the Cal King County District Court set up a user-friendly relicensing program system a long time ago. They hold your hand through it, and, you know, basically you can take some time to pay. Um, is there a bad relationship between, you know, on this particular issue with the, with the public in general, or is it just a few people who are complaining and Senator Klein was not pandering but appealing to those few people? I think that might be the case. Uh, I can certainly say that it's been my own experience that, uh, that the, you know, local traffic courts tend to be 
very forgiving and will in fact we're we're in the middle of or we're coming towards the end actually my how time flies uh, of a I don't know if they're calling it an amnesty program but if you have mm -hmm. uh, if you have uh, excessive um, penalties I think uh, on top of fines if you pay them by the end of June uh, you won't have to pay those mm. uh, those extra penalties. Well, you're in luck because Marcus weighed in on this too. He let's go to the next part from Marcus because essentially he said it's embarrassing to have elected officials stuck up to those who simply refuse to adhere to the basic tenets of civil society. And you know, pretty much, you know, if you're if you're uh, breaking the law, everybody knows it's the law. You know, if the speed limit is 40 and mm -hmm. you're going 50 mm -hmm. and you get ticketed. You know, you end up you're going to lose that, so you might as well just pay it. That's right. You might and as well just pay it. And if you can't pay it, there are alternatives, aren't there? And there are. And I know from experience uh, that <laughs> if it's uh, I if it's your first uh, uh, traffic uh, offense, uh, that oftentimes they'll, uh, if it's relatively minor and you pay it immediately, they'll, uh, th it, it won't even be a mark on your record. So I think the courts are remarkably forgiving, mm. um, and that at the risk of sounding like a mom, and I hope my children are listening right now, it's very important to just follow the rules. <laughs> okay, mom. <laughs> uh, well, let's go on to something else. And this was, um, and I noticed from uh, Rainier Valley Post that this was one of the, the most read columns. And it was a woman was hit and killed by a light rail train in the Rainier Valley. And I don't live too far from, uh, from this area either. Uh, and I, you know, I know that when it's on the grade that people walk across it. Um, well, according to Sound Transit spokesman Bruce Gray, the train operator sounded his warning horn repeatedly and applied maximum brakes, but was unable to avoid the woman who apparently did not make any effort to move off of the tracks. So, the commenters had a lot to say about this, too. They did. I think, uh, it, as always, I think some of our commenters said it best. Uh, you know, you, you can't... Um, you know, there are dangers all around us. You mm -hmm. know, as as adults, as thinking people, you know, we make choices about uh, being safe or not being safe. Or, you know, I mean, I have. I think one one commenter said it best. You know, we have no idea what was going through this woman's mind. Right. Um, could have been a lot of things. Yeah. Uh, I think that some people expected more uh, accidents and casualties than we've actually seen, which is certainly yep. positive. Um, but you can't, you know, you can't do away with, with all dangers. I mean, you know, a per person can step in front of a car at any time. Uh, so yeah, let's actually go to let's go to the comments because they were they really were pointed and they were clearly on opposite sides. Here's stakeholder, and uh, he had a very long quotes too. So let's go to the first pull quote from him, and he said the fact is that the FTA wrote in the sound uh, in that Sound Transit should not build the Central Link light rail segment above grade. In the current design because of safety issues that's why save our valley folks fought sound transit to put the train underground okay let's go uh, to the next quote it cannot be overlooked that southeast seattle has the largest population of elderly and disabled persons that includes mental health issues we have the largest population of children and you know you, you keep going on and we're almost break time but i wanted to finish this issue and then he says this he or she says this I hope the choo-choo zealots will stop blaming the victim and buying into Sound Transit's claims about suicide by train. Perhaps the woman was deaf or off her meds. Either way, she was a human being and she died a, a horrible death. Yes. She I can did. certainly agree with that last part. If you are the train operator, what can you do? You can't stop in time. I can't even imagine how awful that must be. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so if indeed it was a suicide by train, you know, it, she wasn't essentially just taking her own life. She, the person who was the train operator, is mm -hmm. impacted forever as well. Mm -hmm. One more quote, and then we'll go to the break, I promise, Ed. Uh, Rainier Rita, she says, in the whole history of fixed rail, not one person has been killed by a train leaving the tracks and going after them. Stay away from the tracks, and the trains will stay away from you. And then she says this, as for the whole Save Our Valley campaign, I'm not a victim and I refuse to be treated as one. If we're going to bring a lost cause up every time a tragedy like this occurs, we will soon descend into irrelevance. The, link light, the light rail is here to stay. We have real problems and, and real issues to work out. I, I think she put it best. You know, it's here. It's here to stay. It's time to move on and do the best we can with what we have. 
Very good. We're going to take a very short break. We are very fortunate right here on Community Blog TV to have one of my favorites, Amber Campbell, who's the editor and publisher of the Rainier Valley Post. It's RainierValleyPost.com. Uh, Rainier Valley is a beautiful area, and yes, it has its challenges, but every single area has its challenges. But we're going to be talking about some great things that's going on there right after the break, which we just finished with. So let's get on with some of that. And this is a great thing that happened, even though, you know, when you look right at it, you think, wow, this is interesting. Here's the headline, Rainier Beach Drug House to be shuttered for one year and neighbors are elated. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, it's a beautiful looking house. It's a great picture. Isn't it? I know. It, it's certainly seen better days. All right, let's go to the first quote. This is from the article. The city of Seattle filed a suit in March saying the home had been the subject of at least 83 calls to 911 during the preceding 18 months, including excessive foot traffic, prostitution, vehicle prowls, burglaries, assaults, noises, and other crimes that occurred at all our hours. Next quote. One month later, a police raid turned up uh, cash and crack cocaine. Certainly not what you want in your neighborhood. Oh, my goodness. And it's right down the block. I mean, just steps away uh, from one of our most beautiful lakefront uh, beaches there in Rainier Beach called Pritchard Beach. Mm -hmm. And one of the co commenters, uh, or one of the neighbors actually, um, said, uh, commented how nice it will be to just be able to, to let their children walk down the street to the beach. It literally is just steps away. And I, I, you can't underestimate uh, the impact to the, the negative impact to the quality of life, you know, when you have uh, these kinds of activities going on. This is a really narrow street. It's not far from my own neighborhood. Um, and so, you know, you have prostitutes turning tricks in cars on the street and people urinating on the street and drug sales going on. And it's just um, those neighbors have worked very, very, very hard uh, to clean up that situation. It's not the first time, in fact, uh, that the house has uh, has has been shuttered. Actually, it, it hasn't yet. It will be, uh, I think, next week is the deadline for yeah, the- Yeah, I think it was June 24th. June 24th. Uh, well, this will be the second time uh, really? that, the, that the house will be shuttered for a year. Um, and uh, so, you know, the neighbors are really hoping that the city and the city attorney and uh, the police department and the neighbors themselves, you know, have the resolve to, uh, to see this through. Well, actually, the neighbors do have an idea, and uh, and they put it right on uh, on the Rainier Valley Post. Let's go to these comments. First one says, "Now it's empty. It would be a good time to burn it down." <laughs> what happens when the year is up? Uh, and then the next person says, "Yeah, I can just see the neighborhood dancing around, uh, <laughs> bumping the talking heads, burning down the house." <laughs> you there. gotta love the Rainier Valley. <laughs> That's it's bittersweet, you know. It's really unfortunate uh, that a homeowner has to be, you know, essentially forced out of their home under these circumstances. Uh, she's in her 70s, the homeowner, um, but you know, there's no question. I mean, it's not an easy process, as these neighbors will be the first to tell you, no. uh, to you know, for this to happen, to make this happen, uh, and and so they've all had to work very hard and. Um, and and they couldn't be happier. It's really a good situation. When I was a kid growing up, I, I lived about half a mile from a rec center, community center. And I every day that uh, you know I wasn't in school, I was at the rec center playing baseball or basketball or doing something, you know, there and playing. There are big changes coming for uh, Seattle and our community centers, aren't there? Well, you know, just like in so many other uh, areas right now, the budget cuts are just um, intense. They're intense, and uh, they're hitting some of our most vulnerable citizens first, um, and that's who a lot of the community centers serve. Yeah, it says changes are coming to the Seattle community centers and make your voice heard. And uh, pulling a quote from it, it says, the draft options for changing community centers operations can be found here, and this is on the Rainier Valley Post. So if you want to find out more information, be sure to go to the post and click on the link. It says, when you click the link, you see several options being explored by the department management to save about $1.7 in community center operation funds. Um, it's one thing for the community to say, you know, don't close it. But it's a, yet another thing for there to be, for the community to help find a way to keep it open. What are the, some of the alternatives that they're talking about? Well, one of them is privatization. Hmm. So um, people basically needing to pay a fee to get in. Uh, well, that uh, and or um, uh, sponsorships by businesses and corporations 
Um, there are quite a few alternatives on the table. Um, you know, I, my concern is I'm not sure the community, despite the public meeting um, and some of the other information that's come through, I frankly am not sure that the community uh, is really in touch really? Um, with, with how bad this is going to be. Um, we've already lost uh, one of our community centers in the Rainier Valley, not permanently, um, but it's just such a poor time for it to be closed, the Rainier Beach Community Center. It's oh, going to yeah. undergo some wonderful renovations. It's a big project. It's great. Uh, it'll be wonderful when it's finished. Um, in the meantime, you know, we have a lot of kids, uh, especially teenagers and, and, and younger, um, that really need a place to go in the community and need to be shown that, that uh, the rest of us care about stuff like that. So what can the people do? continue to make their voices heard. And there is actually a survey, uh, I believe, I know that we have a link to it um, in our post about the meeting. The meeting was uh, last Thursday up at Jefferson Community Center, uh, or, oh, that was just last night. Um, but you can still go to the survey and, and make your voice heard. So I hope people will do that. Uh, the, um, uh, the, some more things, there are some uh, new medical and dental uh, clinics. So well, there's some new healthcare options in Rainier Valley. One, there's a new medical and dental clinic in Rainier Beach that seeks to reduce radical disparities in health. That's one. And the second one is an urban impact to host a weekly pediatric care clinic in Rainier Beach as well. So how, I mean, these are, these are small businesses too. How important is that to the community that there are small businesses that are healthcare oriented? Absolutely critical. I, for one, am so excited uh, at the idea of being able to take my two young children uh, to the Rainier Beach uh, Medical and Dental, Dental Clinic. Um, you know, we've lived in the Rainier Valley for, for years and, uh, or in Southeast Seattle, and uh, we've always had to travel outside the Rainier Valley um, for healthcare. And um, we, as we talked earlier, we have some great dental options. Um, but it'll just be nice to have this clinic all in one place. Um, it's a beautiful clinic, uh, jobs, you know, providing jobs, and mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. it's it's just a. I, I think it's and it's in Rainier Beach, which as we talked about earlier and and have on previous uh, uh, shows, it, it, it is a really really struggling community. And so it's wonderful to see something like this. It's kind of a gem right there. Um, in the in the middle of everything uh, at Rainier near Rainier and Henderson, just south of Rainier and Henderson, mm. which is a really troubled corner. Yeah. Um, so it's it's really nice to have something so beautiful and new that that the community will really be using. Mm. Okay, so if you want to know more information, go to the Rainier Valley Post. You could probably search healthcare, right? Mm -hmm. Search healthcare, and you're going to find this uh, these articles, and uh, maybe it's a clinic that's near you uh, that you can use as well. Um, I love your open thread Thursdays, and uh, so it's a what's on your mind, neighbors. Essentially, it's a no holes uh, barred. Pretty much. And so let's uh, let's go to the quote right here. This is uh, most anything is op open for discussion. Here was something interesting. There were a lot of posts that said the same thing. How about a story about the uh, uh, Huara Cheetos fire? <laughs> it's right? a very popular restaurant uh, in the Martin Luther King uh, Rainer um, uh, Light Rail corridor. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, I just, our readers are so on top of it, you know, we can't, we can't keep up with, with everything that they want to know about. Hopefully, hopefully, uh, we're working on the story now, hopefully, um, they won't be closed for too long, um, but we haven't confirmed that with the owner yet. Well, but the reason that I even mention this is there were so many posts asking about this same thing, it, it kind of just screams at me that says, here is a small business, probably, I, I'm guessing family owned. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, right there in the community that was going to be closed and the people were wondering about it. Mm -hmm. uh, so again, the, showing the importance of a small business to a community. So important, exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, another interesting quote from the Open Thread Thursdays was this one right here from Big Pentameter. I just want to give a big shout out to the person who smashed my car window Tuesday night in order to steal nothing. As my radio is not in the car and I don't keep anything of value in the glove compartment, there was nothing to take. I guess the pile of clothes for Goodwill were, were tempting, but uh, none of those were taken either. So I'm just out 200 bucks and the time it took to clean up the incredible amount of shattered glass and find a replacement window for my old car. Thanks for the attention. It's so good to feel wanted. 
That is so frustrating. <laughs> uh, you know, a lot of us who've lived in the Rainier Valley for a long time, uh, you know, like to make fun of people who leave, you know, their laptops or their cell phones or, you know, other things uh, laying on the seat in full view uh, and then wonder why their car was broken into. So you just really got to feel for somebody when this happens. Yeah. Yeah, especially when they just had old clothes he was taking to Goodwill. Exactly. And they didn't even take them. <laughs> uh, there's some really good things happening. We're going to go over those, unfortunately, too quickly. Uh, one of them is save the date. It's time to start planning your summer block party. National Night Out scheduled for August the 2nd. This is uh, tied to the police, right? It is, and it's it's really a great event because um, local officers uh, come out into the community. It's actually astonishing. I don't have the numbers right now. Uh, I'll bring them with me next time, but trust me, it's astonishing how many block parties a very small amount of officers are able to make it to in that one night. And I know from experience, because I've had two block parties in, in my own neighborhood, mm -hmm. um, that uh, it's not a rush job. You know, they come, they hang out, they eat our barbecue, they have a good time, they talk, and you certainly don't feel mm. like, you know, they're rushing off somewhere. And I think that's so important in a community like the Rainier Valley um, that does deal um, with a lot of street crime. Um, I'm going to go quickly over these because we do have one final thing we have to get to. Uh, August 20th is the... Um, uh, it's time to join one of America's most diverse communities for the 2011 Rainier Valley Heritage Parade. I'd love to talk about that more maybe next time. Uh, and happy birthday to the Seward Park celebration of 100 years. Be sure to uh, go to the website itself, SewardParkCentennial.org. But now I finally got, I have to go back to the Rainier Chamber of Commerce just for a very brief minute because I wanted to say a good big shout out and congratulations to you for getting back on the Rainier Chamber of Commerce board. Let's go to the picture. Because here, see all of those people up waving and saying nice things? Let's, let's blow that up a little bit, Ed, can we? You know, those are some great shoes. Aren't they though, Is right? Is that what you were doing? You were admiring your shoes? Of course I wasn't, Stan. I was <laughs> thinking about the profundity of another year on the Rainier Chamber board and, and how fun and exciting that will be. <laughs> well, by the way, we got to go to this. The next thing and the final thing is it's tweet time with Rainier Valley Post, Amber Campbell herself. And your tweet address is ADI Campbell, is mm -hmm. that right? Addie Campbell. Addie Campbell. Mm -hmm. And so tweeting is uh, early and often, is that it? Uh, yes, it is. We, ha you know, uh, we feature two accounts there at the Rainier Valley Post. That's my sort of personal account, uh, Addie Campbell, and then of course the Rainier Valley Post that pumps out. All right, so I headlines. am encouraging everybody out there to go ahead and get personal with Amber and ask her what she was looking at in that picture <laughs> right there with the Rainier Valley Chamber of Commerce. Thank you very much to Amber and everybody in the Rainier Valley. We'll see you right here next week on Community Blog TV. Take care.